All right, so for those of you who, jo who are joining us now, um, I'm sure many of you know me. I'm Cooper Knowlton. I'm joined with my partner, Lee Bergstein. Uh, we both work at Bergstein, Flynn & Knowlton, um, where we do uh, work with a lot of small businesses and individuals around the state of New York. Um, we are very excited to have Senator Alessandra Biaggi joining us, a friend of mine who is uh, very generous to give a few minutes of her time to fill in our network about um, some stuff the Senate is working on um, and uh, specifically to address some, some concerns that I know a number of people in our network have about um, the state of uh, commercial um, lease obligations in New York. Um, so we're gonna talk through, through some of that as well and then maybe uh, answer a couple questions at the end of the call. Um, but I think Alessandra, uh, first off, thank you so much, or, or Senator, thank you so much for joining us. Um, um, I think it would be great uh, if maybe you could just spend a couple minutes talking about um, maybe the top priorities for the Senate um, mm -hmm. this fall, uh, as specifically as it pertains to, you know, for, for small business owners and business owners uh, in New York City and, and across the state. Um, any, any specific pieces of legislation that you think that um, they should uh, be aware of um, and things that are kind of on the horizon as well. You got it. So first and foremost, good morning to everyone who's joining us and thank you very, very much to Cooper and his partner Lee for having me here again. Um, and all of, the, all of you who are tuning in from wherever you are tuning in today, um, as we're really gonna be talking about the recovery process of our neighborhoods um, and supporting small businesses throughout this period of time. But obviously, as I say, recovery, I'm absolutely aware of the fact that we are still in a pandemic, even though I think when we have these conversations and have a lot of conversations these days, oftentimes we're thinking about, oh, remember the pandemic? No, it is still here, <laughs> as we, I think, all are unfortunately probably wishing it were not. Um, but that does not mean we cannot start to think about what it means to build back and build back much stronger. So I know that everyone who is joining us today, is, what I'm about to say is really me preaching to the choir. Um, our small businesses are the absolute life source and the critical infrastructure that really keeps our communities afloat. Um, there are job creators, our essential services, and, and many of them are also the cultural institutions that really make New York so special. When the pandemic first hit and we went into the into lockdown, my office, as I'm, if you joined us you know, months ago, I'm sure you will remember me saying that my office was absolutely flooded with questions from our small business owners and what was going to happen to them and how they were going to survive and what we could do for them. And even though um, we had some answers, a lot of what we have done since then has really been a new playbook. And so that is really why one of the first things that my office uh, did at that time was hold a district-wide small business town hall so that any of the owners of small businesses could have the information that was available to them, the resources that both the city and the state put out, um, and make sure that they had the necessary guidelines to navigate the situation. One of the most important things during a crisis, this will remain true whether it's a tornado or a pandemic, is having the information that you need to be able to understand what's going on and to remain in a safe and thoughtful and meaningful um, process as you're thinking about all of the circumstances that are affecting you, whether you're a small business owner, um, a renter, a, a parent, whatever it might be. Um, and so what we also made sure of was that the small businesses understood that they had a direct line to us um, so that we could ex at, like really escalate their issues to the executive branch of government, um, as you know, the governor, and make sure that his team was aware because Circumstances district by district were different. And so today my office is continuing to be in constant communication with our bids, our business improvement districts, um, merchant associations, as well as many other business organizations, um, such as the Bronx Night Market. If you don't know what the Bronx Night Market is, by the way, definitely look them up. Um, they're kind of like the Bronx equivalent of Brooklyn's Smorgasburg, right? And they have been a 
just an amazing resource during this time, especially to um, a lot of our business owners who are really not used to, I think, um, being part of big organizations. They're very small mom and pop organizations. Um, and the Bronx Night Market has become this, this trustworthy resource for them as well. So look them up. They're very cool. Um, and so what we have basically been doing is continuing to address all of these issues, provide more resources. And so at the start of the summer, which seems like one second ago, and I cannot believe it's September already, um, we virtually returned to Albany. I'm sure if you were watching to see what we were doing in the Senate and the Assembly. And we passed a bunch of COVID-related bills, um, including legislation to support small businesses, okay? So I'm just gonna run through a few of those bills just to share with you what we've done. Um, and then if you have questions about any of those, put them in the chat. My team, Maya and Leanne are here, so they will answer as many questions as possible. And hopefully we can make sure that you have every piece of information that you need to be able to do your jobs. So the first bill, that I would like to discuss is Senator Rachel May's bill. Senator Rachel May represents Syracuse. Her bill was S8181A, and the bill establishes a state disaster emergency loan program. Um, I co-sponsored this bill. Um, the bill basically authorizes each IDA or industrial development agency in the state to establish a state disaster emergency loan program in response to COVID-19 and of course the emergency that we're in. So under a program like this, an IDA is permitted to issue what is considered an interest-free loan, which I'm sure many of you can imagine is probably the, the most sought after type of loan, um, of up to $25,000 to small businesses or organizations during the period of the state of emergency. Now, I am not hallucinating or think that $25,000 um, will cover most small businesses or many small businesses, but it's better than nothing. And um, it's not the only thing that we did. So I just wanna be very clear about that. I'm not you know, delusional. I know $25,000 is a very small amount, but it is a significant amount for some small businesses and will remain in place until the end of the state of emergency, which just to be very clear, we are still under the state of New York. And I believe we will remain under until the end of the pandemic, which could be until you know the mid or the end of 2021. Um, this bill, Senator Rachel May's bill, also allows IDAs to provide grants, which is another, I think, uh, very sought after um, monetary relief. Um, or in-kind contributions to small businesses or organizations so that they could provide and, and purchase PPE or install fixtures such as plexiglass windows to prevent the spread of COVID-19. I'm sure you all have seen that if you are out and about in the community. Um, I really believe that this bill will be absolutely critical for providing small businesses with any of the cost relief that they need to make the necessary adjustments um, as we really are, are continuing to think about what this new normal is. And I, it's such a cliched thing to say, so I apologize for saying it, but it's, it is that that is what it is. Um, and to make sure that our non-essential businesses across the state are actually safe places for people and patrons to, um, to, to participate in. Um, the governor signed this bill, by the way, into law in June. The next bill is Senator Metzger's bill. That bill is bill number S6800A also was a co-sponsor of this bill. Um, this bill directed the Division of Small Business, DSB is the uh, acronym for that, to publish a guide of statutory or regulatory changes that impact small business owners, um, to engage in public awareness campaigns that are designed to make sure uh, any type of business owners or operators are educated about changes, these changes in the law that have been made, um, and then the best ways for these businesses to comply. Um, I wanna just pause for one minute and say something. A lot of the times when we pass laws in Albany, or really, frankly, anywhere, um, bills will be passed into law, they will, be, they will be signed into law by the governor, and then a lot of people don't know that they exist. And so this is a bill that has not yet been delivered to the governor's desk, so it's still waiting, but it has passed both houses, so we're just waiting for its signature. But I wanna just be very clear that I think this, this bill, even though it might sound very dry and kind of boring, is really probably one of the most important bills that we pass because if we do not um, make sure that the laws we pass actually are shared with those that are most impacted, it's kind of like a pointless bill. It doesn't even, it doesn't really do what it needs to do. And so to me, this is one of the best things you can do, providing a compliance guide. We do not want businesses to 
be punished for not following any of the new rules or not having any of the new um, resources that the state provides. So I think this is really one of the best bills uh, that we did. Uh, the next bill is Senator Parker's bill. It's S4429. Um, and this bill requires ESD, which if you are familiar with ESD, it's Empire State Development uh, Agency in the state of New York, uh, which really deals a lot with um, economic infrastructure, which is a very broad thing to say, but it's, it, it deals with a lot of um, MWBE businesses and so on. So this bill requires ESD to post information on their website and in other places that are related to any state programs that are providing assistance to small businesses or MWBEs, minority and women owned business enterprises on their website. So again, it's a very similar bill to what Senator Metzger's bill does. Um, it provides information about what is available to small businesses. Now, I think if you're a small business and you are not used to interacting with government, which a lot of small businesses are not, you might not even know to go to the ESD website. But part of why these bills are so important is because of what I'm about to share with you. So we know historically that immigrant and minority women-owned businesses face probably more challenges than any of those businesses that are owned by white business owners, right, during normal circumstances. And so they already have a lot of the deck stacked against them. And so it really only makes sense that these businesses are um, at an even greater risk through the duration of this pandemic and that information for assistance should be really made available and made it made easily available to them. Um, I remember uh, a few months ago, I saw a lot of um, the hip hop industry posting on their social media platforms to small businesses that there was relief available. And then these were the steps to take to be able to receive the relief. And I think that, that using these non-traditional ways of sharing information has actually been one of the reasons why we have seen um, in the beginning, probably a low amount of MWBEs reach out for any type of assistance. And then as time went on, really, the number increased. And I think that that is, it's, it's because of all of these efforts combined, but I think it takes an entire community to make sure that this happens. Um, finally, with this bill, it really requires ESD to post information on their website again, so that owners can do three things. Number one, they can search for featured minority and women owned businesses, business enterprises and small business assistance programs. Number two, they can complete applications for assistance in obtaining bonding as well as applications to any other programs that provide financial assistance um, that the department believes or, or deems to be feasible. And number three, um, they can obtain access to census data from the most recent US census. And by the way, if you are listening to this and you have not yet filled out your census, do so immediately online. It takes five minutes and it is probably one of the most important things besides voting that you can do as a citizen. Okay, um, last or as, as a human, not citizen, as a human. Um, okay, so that being said, obviously I just mentioned only three bills. Um, there is still a tremendous amount uh, that needs to be done. By no means is this sufficient or enough, um, but I think that when we talk, when we're, we're thinking about the recovery in New York, you have to think about it in stages, and the access to the information is perhaps the most, one of the most important ways that we can really build back in a strong way. And so I have been one of the legislators that has beat the drum to return to, set, to our to legislative session, even if it's remote. I will continue to do that, and hopefully we can take on a lot of the other bills. I mean, there's hundreds of bills that myself and my colleagues have introduced that would make it much easier for our small businesses to return at least back um, in, a, in a way that is more normal than I think what we're seeing right now. That was very helpful. And I think, and I think what you, what you uh, brought up on, on you know, a number of those bills that you mentioned is just access to information. And I think that that's, that is certainly, you know, as a small business owner myself, um, I think just sort of knowing what's out there is what types of loans and protections and, and you know, new requirements is, is sort of a business owner who's thinking about sending employees back to work and, and knowing what we need to do and, and all that information is, is sometimes um, difficult, difficult to access. Isn't it confusing? Because there's so much of it. It's like, 
even even being in it, I read it and I hear it and I, I'm trying to figure out where, how does this new piece of information fit into what we've already known and how does it change what I'm already doing? I mean, it's, it's incredibly confusing for the most bright amongst us. So it's hard, it's really hard. So should we go into commercial lease protections? You wanna jump in? Yeah, I would love to. Okay, so 